Hey friends, this is Shannon from the app, and this is Prop It Up. Okay, so this week's prop comes as a request from a friend who said that she would like to see how we would make a succulent such as a saguaro cactus, spines and all. Um, my first thought, uh, when I think of succulents, I think of the little tiny cactus plants that come in the little white dishes you keep on the windowsill. Um, so my first thought was I would probably just purchase a fake one um, or a real one and put it on the set. It would be cheap enough. Um, but then, this is why you research, I started researching what a saguaro cactus was. And those are huge and very hard to acquire and keep alive in Eastern Kentucky. So, um... Yeah, I would um, go back to figuring out how to build one. Um, I think I vaguely remember making a cactus at some point in time in my career for some play, and I don't remember what play it was. I don't remember how I made it. I remember it was smaller, though. Um, so this video is basically a big experiment of how I would make a large cactus. Um, we're still using stuff that, um, materials that I can find in the shop. So this version is only going to be about a foot and a half tall because um, that's what I had. Um, those are the splice that I had. However, um, I think that a lot of these techniques that I used, I would be able to translate to a larger um, piece that is, you know, 12 to 20 feet tall. Um, so I hope you enjoy this video of how I figure out how to make a large cactus. Okay, so to start the cactus, I'm going to make a base out of a cardboard tube. This is like a cardboard mailing tube that I had in the shop. Um, the skinnier tube is going to come in a little bit later. Um, I'm going to use that to make the arms, and I think that that came from a roll of wrapping paper, if I'm not mistaken. Um, the other tools you need are a low temp hot glue gun and um, an electric knife to be able to cut the foam. Uh, the foam for the ridges is going to be made out of a pool noodle. Pool noodles are really good um, materials to have around. You can use them for a lot of things. In this case, we are making ridges for a cactus. Um, I'm going to measure the pool noodle, make it slightly bigger than the um, mailing tube, slightly longer than the mailing tube, because that's going to help form the point at the top. Um, this mailing tube was, I don't know, maybe like a foot long, um, and then, so when it's all said and done, the catch is probably going to be like a foot and a half. I found that the easiest way to cut the foam is with the electric knife. Um, it cuts really smooth and straight lines. Um, it works a little bit better, a lot better actually, than um, using uh, a, a box cutter um, or an X-Acto knife. Um, I just find that I get straighter, even cuts. So I'm going to make one cut down the side of the pool noodle. And when you look on the cactus, the, the ridges are kind of, I guess they form kind of like a triangle shape. And I was looking at the pool noodle and the inside of the pool noodle um, is kind of the shape that I want for the outside of the cactus, if that makes sense. So I'm going to cut strips of the pool noodle lengthways all the way down. And this is where um, the electric knife really comes in handy because it cuts through that foam just like butter. So it's going to create a strip um, that I can use for the ridge. And then the, the skinnier portion I'm going to put on the outside and then I'm going to glue the thicker portion onto the actual um, cardboard mailing tube. So I'm going to speed this up a little bit. So you're just going to cut a bunch of strips of this pool noodle. I think I cut um, two lengths of the full pool noodle and then cut it into strips. Don't worry about them being uh, exactly all the same. Actually, I think it's kind of better if it's not all the same. I think it gives more of a natural um, look to it, but just enough to cover the uh, tube of the um, the mailing tube. Um, 
there were two different materials that I thought about using for this project. Uh, one was the soft foam, so pool noodle. Um, and then another was like the harder uh, construction foam. And both of them I think could work. They both have pros and cons. The construction foam comes in four by eight sheets. So if I was making a bigger cactus, it would probably be easier um, to cut all of those uh, to make them longer. But what I really like about the pool noodle is that um, when you cut it and then you attach it to the cardboard mailing tube, it kind of gave a, a more natural fluid movement of the cactus. And I think that you could create the same thing um, just using a couple lengths of pool noodle and attaching it through a longer cactus. So for me, using the uh, more pliable, movable foam worked a lot better. Um, you could definitely carve that though with a hot knife and, and some hard foam. But basically, so for this project, I'm just taking the low temp hot glue and attaching these pool noodles to the mailing tube. Um, again, you want to put it on the outside so it's going to create ridges um, around the, the cactus body. Cool, so then after you finish putting all of the ridges over the um, cardboard tube, you're gonna take the top portion of that and kind of cut it and form it into a dome shape or, or a bullet shape um, and attach it with, with the hot glue again. I did not do a very good job of getting this all in the camera, so we're just going to go ahead and jump to the finished product and hopefully you can kind of see what I mean by how I attached all of that right there. Okay, so this next step is how I put the arms on the cactus. Um, I've got, I think it's like an inch and a half whole bit. And you wanna start by hand. You wanna uh, just twist it wherever you want the arm of the cactus to be. Um, but do it by hand first because um, I was afraid that if I went ahead and just attached it right with the drill, it would rip all the foam off that um, I just put on. So this is just uh, to take the first layer off. Then you can attach it to the drill and go ahead and make a hole for your cactus arm. So when I uh, made the hole, I went ahead and uh, drilled it at an angle. Um, this is gonna help the cactus arm go um, up instead of straight out. It's a little thing because the cardboard tube is actually pretty thin, um, so it's not going to affect it that much, but every little bit helps. The other thing that I did is that with the um, cactus arm, I also cut that at an angle, as you can see. And then later on, I ended up um, actually flattening out the portion that I stuck into the cactus so that it would stick up even further because in the picture you can see that the arms are going up to the sky um that's where i got the idea to flatten it out um it, they grow up towards the sky they don't grow straight out so i really wanted that movement to go up towards the sky so when you have it at the angle that you want go ahead and attach that with hot glue and then you're just going to cut more ridges with a shorter length of the pool noodle and do the same thing like you did on the base of it. Um, these ridges I did a little bit smaller because the arm is a little smaller than the um, base.
This portion, you can also see how I formed the um, tip of it, the, the bullet shape of the cactus. Um, it kind of takes some cutting and shaping and gluing, um, but just work with it until you get it to the shape that you want. And then um, you're gonna do the same thing for the other arm or for however many arms you want. I went ahead and did two arms. So I'm just gonna jump to the end of that. It's the same process. And there you have your base of the cactus. How cute is that? So next step is going to be to paint the cactus. Okay, so to paint the cactus, I'm just using green acrylic paint. Um, and then I mixed in some um, latex uh, clear painter's caulk um, to try and smooth out the um, texture of the pool noodle. Um, there are tons of ways that I could have done this. And that's um, one of the things that happens when I make props, um, even if it's a prop that I've made, you know, five million times um there's always a process of uh reflection of what worked what didn't work uh if i ever had to make it again what i would do differently um this is a perfect example <laughs> um if it was a bigger cactus like if if i was making a you know six seven eight ten foot cactus whatever um I probably wouldn't need the latex painter's caulk um, because chances are that cactus is going to be, you know, way upstage, uh, far enough away from the audience that you wouldn't really see it, um, be able to see the, the texture up close. So just painting it with regular paint and if it was a bigger um, um, piece, I would probably be using uh, latex paint like we use on stage. Um, and not necessarily acrylic craft paint. But this just depends on, you know, the size of your project, what you're using it for, the given circumstances of the prop and, and what it needs to do. So um, this is one of those examples, like I said, that there are so many different ways to do it. Also the coloring. Every picture that I looked at, they um, have cacti obviously under the hot sun so it's a lot lighter color but if you look at a cactus up close it's a, a darker color um so i started with a lighter color and then um, you'll see later on when i cut to the finished product um, i actually went through and ended up shading in with a dark color one of the things that i really liked about that is it kind of created um, a two-tone effect all i did was um i put the first layer on um and then um, after that dried, I just took a darker green color and kind of, um, did a drag effect of the darker green over the lighter green. It's really simple technique, um, but it created, um, really nice texture. And if you're looking at the cactus under lights, you're going to want more of a texture. It's going to come out kind of flat, um, even when you have that texture, but if you didn't put the texture, then it would look super, super super flat so um kind of like a little stage painting technique thing that you have to consider So you're going to paint the cactus, get it to the um, coloring that you want, let it dry for a day or two, and then we will jump to the finished product. Do -do -do -do. So you can see the two different tones there kind of just adds a little bit more texture, uh, a little more realism, let's say. So the next thing that I had to do um, was figure out the little cactus spines um because that was the request with spines and all um 
And I had to really think about this because um, there are a couple of factors that uh, went into play. Uh, the biggest being that probably um, an actor or a technician would have to move it at some point. So I wanted something that actually wasn't going to hurt when you touched it. Um, I thought about like toothpicks um, or things like that, but still that would be pretty difficult to move, especially if it was a big piece, you would want to be able to get a good handle on it. Um, I also tried bristles of a paintbrush or a broom, um, and that, um, although it looked cool, it just uh, seemed like it was going to take forever. But the thing that I came up with was I found this twine, it's the really rustic, rustic looking twine that you can find at a craft store um, and I cut little pieces of that um, they're probably I don't know like three or four inches long um, and then I went ahead and tied a knot in the middle like so and then um, I took a bobby pin so I needed something that would um, be able to poke into the soft foam. And that's the nice thing about using the soft foam is that um, a simple bobby pin will make a hole in it. Um, I guess you could probably use like a little drill bit too. But anyway, um, on the cactus, um, you can see that the spikes, when you look at a close-up picture, you can see that the spikes go directly down and they're pretty uniform on each ridge. So I just made um, a hole uh, where I wanted the little spike to go and then um, another reason why I used the bobby pin and I tied the little knot in there is because you put the knot on the hole and then use the bobby pin to press that knot down into the hole and it'll hold it um, pretty securely into the foam. Um, I did try with just putting you know one piece of string in there um, or a piece of twine and it didn't fit as nicely. I also, this isn't absolutely necessary, but I also put another um, dollop of hot glue on there um, just to further secure each little spike. This is time consuming. It is not as time consuming as putting individual bristles from a broom on there. Um, but if you wanted the spikes, uh, that's how I figured out how I would do it uh, for you now. I'm still looking for a slightly better option. I'm not absolutely in love with this option, but um, it kind of did what it needed to do. And I think from a distance, it would look uh, fairly realistic. Um, up close, I'm not 100% sold on it, but that's okay. That's what I can improve on for the next time I have to make a large cactus. Okay, so here's why I really do like using the twine though, is after you get the little spines on, let's say that it's all over the cactus. So um, just take each individual one and you can twist it and it fans apart and it creates the look of the little cactus spike. How cool is that? And you can touch it, it doesn't hurt, it's not spiky, but it'll give the look, especially from far away, of um, the cactus and all of its spines and after i finished all of it i just went through and kind of gave it a little haircut and shaped it um to get it to the length and the look that i wanted and there it is in all its glory a smaller version of how i'd make a large swarrow cactus there's a lot of things that I really like about how this project turned out. I love the way that the pool noodles created a good natural movement on the cactus. Again, I'm not absolutely in love with the spikes. I think that there's a better way to make them more, look more realistic. But the request was to make a zero cactus um, spikes and all. And I think that with those circumstances, I accomplished it. Um, whenever you're doing a props design, it is important to take into account the given circumstances from the script, uh, what is needed by the set designer, the director, um, how you can best serve the cast, and then you have to work that into your prop design. Um, anyone who knows me knows that I love adding a little bit of humor into all the props that I make as long as they fit in with the story that we are trying to tell. And what is the best way to add humor to an inanimate object? That's right, googly eyes. Googly eyes make everything instantly funnier. 
I hope you enjoyed my video today. If you did, go ahead, give it a like, give it a share. Um, if you have a suggestion of a prop you'd like to see me make, go ahead and comment below or shoot me a message. If I've made it before, I'll show you my process. If I haven't made it before, I will try to figure it out and we can learn together. Thanks so much for watching. Stay happy, stay healthy, and create something today. It's good for your soul.